On Saturday the 12th of September, nearly 100,000 people marched through the streets of London on the Refugees' Welcome demonstration. Similar actions have been seen across Europe, as workers and youth show their instinctive solidarity and internationalism for refugees fleeing war and poverty, as well as their anger towards the establishment that is doing nothing to help. We spoke to Hamid Elizadeh, who analyses the imperialist causes behind the refugee crisis and explains the socialist way forward. I'll say that if you look at uh, if you look at the way that the bourgeois is representing it, it's as if uh, the establishment of Europe is is presenting it. It's as if there's millions of people who just suddenly um, feels like they have to want to come up and take whatever we have, uh, whatever luxuries we have built with our own hands and so on here here in Europe. They want to come up and take our good life and a threat to our European uh, democracy, uh, whatever. That's kind of the type of, the type of uh, idea that, that the establishment is putting forward today. But if you look at the real situation, who's caused, who's caused the situation in, uh, which is causing this uh, refugee crisis? Has it been, um, is this something self-made or has it been uh, put in from, 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 uh, from uh, outside? Uh, in Iraq alone, where a lot of these refugees are coming from, Millions of people have been displaced. Why? Was it because of the inherent flaws of the Iraqi society? Not at all. It's, it's been because of a brutal occupation, an invasion of, of a country, uh, for, no absol- for absolutely no reason. And then the whipping up of a sectarian war there in order to, to, to dominate the country. Uh, I mean, more than 1.3 million people have been killed by the Iraqi, Iraq war alone. And three million people have been displaced. That's just official figures. That's just what we can actually, uh, you know, count as people who are actual like official refugees. But the other thing is that the whole life, the whole, the whole all of civilized life in these countries, have been shaken to the grounds. And for many people, for for, for the vast majority, probably it doesn't really exist anymore. And then you go have a, a look at Syria, where the, most of the uh, um, refugees are from. And what happened there? Well, there was a revolution. There was a revolution initially in 2011 against the Assad dictatorship. But what happened to that revolution? It was diverted into a sectarian struggle by what? By billions and billions and billions uh, of funds thrown in to the country by the, the close allies of the West, the Gulf states, Turkey, and so on. But also by the West, by the CIA, by the MI, was it? MI6, right? Um, actually, the Syrian operation is the biggest, bu- biggest part of the CIA's budget. This is a this is an actual war taking place on behalf of the West, and who and who are receiving all this money? Where is this so called moderate opposition that that they're talking about? All of these people are Islamists of the worst kinds. You have, you know, today they talk about Jabhat al Nusra al Ahrar al Sham, these Al Qaeda linked organizations, as if they are moderate democratic, uh, you know. Uh, legitimate organizations, and these and these people have been uh, unleashed in, in these countries, murdering hundreds of thousands of people, destroying every you know, grain of civilization there is, and in fact inside Syria there are more uh, there are more refugees than outside of Syria. I think outside of Syria there's something like four million, but inside Syria there's between seven and nine million refugees caused by this uh, uh, this this war. Uh, and especially by by these uh, Islamists who who who've been supported by the West. Who was who were we gonna bomb? Who were when I say we? Who was Britain gonna bomb? Uh, a few only a few years ago, they were gonna bomb Assad. It in in whose benefit? To whose benefit? It was to the benefit of the Islamists. And this and this policy uh, still continues. Turkey, which is a close ally of the West, is is directly supporting. Uh, all the most uh, uh, rabid Islamist uh, organizations, including the IS, uh, and, and the same from the Gulf states, as a flow of money com- coming in there. That's what's causing this uh, a lot of a, b- a big part of this crisis. And the European establishment is, uh, you know, it's just revealing its callousness and its absolute cold blooded and undemocratic nature by refusing to do anything with the with uh, with the refugees by by basically le- uh, shutting out. All the hundreds of thousands of people who have been, uh, who've had their lives destroyed by this thing. 
Another another element is the question of uh, Afghanistan. There's also hundreds of thousands of people coming from Afghanistan. I read yesterday, this, uh, or the other day, I read about this 15-year-old kid who walked for uh, all across uh, Iran and Turkey in order to get to the to, to EU because life was unbearable for him. What about the, uh, all those old and young, you know, newborns and children who can't do that, who cannot afford that? Um, and in and in Libya, I mean. Uh, actually, Gaddafi told the West when they were overthrowing him that he was actually holding back a lot of these, uh, a lot of the refugees coming from 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 Africa. But it's not only that he's no longer there to to be kind of the henchman of the West. Uh, but now there's also millions of uh, refugees, or uh, you know, this this displaced people and ex- people living in extreme poverty and misery inside Libya who who are desperately trying to find and we have to ask ourselves this you know it's been portrayed as if oh you know these uh, these uh, spoiled refugees are going to come to Europe just because we have a better life but why would people just leave their lives i mean even if even when people live in the in the deepest poverty they don't like to leave their lives their, their families their friends the society they know the rules they know uh, everything that they've been they've built up maybe for generations why would they do that and not only do that but risk it all by going in an extremely dangerous boat ride for instance that a lot of people don't make it uh, safe through why would people risk do that if it wasn't for the absolute um, for, for absolute desperation that they that they live in that's the question that that we have to uh, ask ourselves <laughs> This has really brought out the the um, the inherent tensions within the EU, and it's it's reflecting and it's emphasizing the crisis of capitalism. Because you see, there's one million people, let's say around one million people at the moment who are trying to get into Europe. That's that's the figures that we talk about. It's not that big amount. That's that big an amount out of a, a continent which has five hundred million uh, people in it. One million is not much. But it just reveals the extreme tensions which uh, are they're underlying amongst the capitalists and within the capitalist system itself. Uh, because there, there are two trends, of course. There's one trend, which is the probably kind of like the industrial capitalists, who, who, won't, who don't really mind this because this helps them uh, undermine the wages of the European workers. You know, they get, especially from Syria, they get very well, highly skilled labor you know, uh, for very cheap prices or, or, or free. That's, that's basically because these people are desperate, so they, they will take on any job. That's kind of what they're banking on. Then there's a, the, the other question, which is that the, the, the budget deficits and the crisis of capitalism in each and every single one of these countries is at such a high level that taking in these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, people will upset that very fragile balance that some of these economies ha- have been built on. Of course, that wouldn't change the fact that the capitalists are sucking out 10 times the amount of money in like direct, uh, 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 what do you call it, um, subsidies and, and all kinds of other schemes and whatnot. You know, these, these are, what, what, what are you going to pay the, for, for rooming, for housing these refugees? is going to be nothing compared to what the big businesses is funneling out of state coffers as as you speak, but nevertheless, this is a this is a, this is has a, having an upsetting effect inside these economies, and that's revealing the tension in between because the Italians are saying, why should we uh, take all of this? We have uh, one of the biggest state debts in the world. I think they owe more than two trillion dollars, uh, and the Greeks are saying, well, you know, uh, where was Europe when we were uh, collapsing? Now our economy is in this shape, and uh, and you're giving us all these uh, people to, to take care of. That's why also the, the Germans had to take on some people as the strongest economy, because it's, it was it was actually risking the whole system of the European Union, and that's why they ha- kind of had to step in. But it didn't, it's not over yet, I would say. And this is a crisis that, that has... Well, you can say this has accelerated the ongoing deterioration of the EU to a certain ex- to some extent that, for instance, in, in the Danish um, government closed the borders, which is against the law and the rules and regulations which they have agreed upon uh, in this Schengen cooperation that you're not allowed to have border patrols, basically, and they closed the borders. <laughs> And 
and this is also a part of the whole, uh, you know, the the, the uh, instability of the of the bourgeois system itself in Europe, in that they need this kind of rabid right wing populism to prop up the states, basically, because the the old traditional parties, even the old traditional bourgeois parties, don't have that kind of a base. And it's clear that these right-wing parties, for instance, the Danish People's Party, the Front National, uh, UKIP, and all, and all these, they have been trying to bank on this, you know, by saying, oh, the, the immigrants are coming as if it's like an army of zombies or, or you know, something really, really scary. Um, um, yeah, but, but what they're really trying to do is that they're trying to uh, divide the working class. Look, these big bourgeois, they have their hands deep into... Uh, the pockets of every everyone of the state of the working people everyone is sucking out so much money but yet these people want to tell us that no the biggest problems the reasons for unemployment the reasons for cuts the reasons for austerity is because of refugees and, and immigrants who make up an insignificantly small amount of the european uh, 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 population uh, uh, you know economically speaking <laughs> Yeah, so, the, so they're trying to uh, bank on the misery of these people and on this terrible, terrible situation by, by, by whipping up fears that everything is going to go down now because of, because, of the, because of the immigrants who are coming. But I would say that, uh, and, and also they wanted, they want, they're pointing fingers, they're saying to the workers that this is the reason why you're losing your jobs, this is the reason why you're losing your benefits, this is the reason why everything is basically going under because of this tiny, tiny group. Uh, whereas in fact the biggest problem is 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 the capitalist. But I would also say that that we've seen now, uh, for years, there's been an accumulation of, of frustration with this policy. But the problem is that no one has ever been like actually none of the the, the established parties, especially the working class parties who were supposed to do do this, have not spoken out against this outrage. This is completely absolute nonsense. It's so illogical the way that, that these people are speaking. You, you don't even have to criticize them, you know, as in being, being, have a critical tone. You just lay out the actual figures. Who, who is taking money out of the pockets of who? Uh, and it's clear that the bourgeoisie, bourgeoisie that's doing this. But, but the workers' parties, the unions and so on, have done, done nothing in this regard. And in fact, many of them have gone along with this rabid nationalist racist uh, mood and, 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 and rhetoric and therefore there's been a tension there's been an unease and deep uh, frustration amongst large layers of the population which in who instinctively this working class people instinctively feel that the need for unity to to come out and, and help but they haven't had an outlet for this and this i think has triggered uh, the, a, 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 an outburst of these kind of emotions which is also a part of the general crisis of the European establishment. You know, basically, the European, uh, you know, we've seen anti-establishment move developing everywhere. And now this whole, the question of racism, very correctly, you know, it shows actually the high level of political conscience amongst the youth and the workers, that the question of racism is being tied up to the establishment. That's the policy of the establishment. And a lot of people are, are understanding this and are reacting to it. And we've seen these, these demonstrations. Um, in Denmark, uh, just from what I know, six people, six or seven uh, young people, just called for a demonstration. And fifty thousand people came out. In London, a hundred thousand people came out. In Sweden, in several thousand, uh, several uh, towns, cities, hundreds of thousands of people have, have come out. In Austria, thirty or forty thousand people have come up. People have been, uh, you know, thousands of people have been going to the borders, going to Germany, driving uh, to drive these refugees through, uh, through throughout Europe to di to different places uh, in, in Europe to help them. People have been uh, gathering food, parcels, and uh, clothes. I think, in fact, in some areas, there's been too much, so they haven't had. You know, they've had more clothes and uh, donations coming in than, than people who were actually refugees would need. And people have taken refugees into their homes. Uh, you know, thousands of people have said we can take one, two, three families. They can, they can live here. And this shows the real, the real essence of the working class, uh, uh, the real mood of the working class, which is for unity, for working class unity against the, uh, racism, against the establishment. And this is a part of the general process that we see in, in, in the working class. It's a part of the same process that we saw in like Corbyn just, just two days ago in Britain as, as, as a labor leader. But that was in fact a, a, a national movement. It was a social movement that, 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 that showed itself there. And it's a part of that same trend 
of basically the working class uh, one by one understanding the, the, how do you say, the limitations of capitalism, the different limitations of capitalism and the limitations that the system is, is putting uh, in front of their lives, the obstacles that it's putting in front of them uh, in order for them not to be able to develop a life in a harmoniously and, 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 and civilized way. This is a, I would say, it's, it's a revolutionary awakening of the Euro European people, of the European uh, uh, working classes, um, which is be which is becoming more and more conscious of the real situation underneath the surface and its own real class interests, which is in unity in in fighting against all these things. Now, I would say that there is a general, even from a general point of view. I mean, aside from this particular refugee crisis in Europe today, we have today fifty nine million refugees, and someone told me that this is the biggest. Uh, amount of refugees in world history. Uh, now I don't know how that would uh, compare to World War Two. Maybe there were there were more there, but it's it's one percent of world population who are refugees today. Now, if you look at the causes for this, what are the causes for this? Is imperialist wars, is privatizations, land grabs in places like India and, and Africa and towns. Is is privatizations? Is is uh, it's is basically capitalism? Is the bourgeoisie? In a, in a situation of crisis, trying to defend this, uh, not only defend, but expand this pro uh, profits. And, uh, and in a situation of crisis, of course, the, the price has to be paid heavily and at an accelerating pace. And it's being paid by normal people. And therefore, normal people are beginning to fight back. And this is, this is a part of that process that we're beginning to see.